So as you all know by now, Dr. Cornell West is running for president of the United States. He's running as part of a third party called the People's Party. Now, there was a giant backlash when he announced that he was going to run. Why? Because the People's Party is sort of a very sketchy organization, to say the least. First of all, there's an open question as to whether or not it's even a political party. It's more of like a private organization with this guy Nick Branagh at the top of it. The way it's filed is questionable. Um, there's been allegations of sexual harassment against this guy. There was basically like a coup at the top level against other leaders and the board of the People's Party. But look, more importantly than that, put all that stuff aside, more importantly than that, they've never won a single seat anywhere. They're going right for, let's run for president, but you didn't get anybody elected at the local level. You didn't get anybody elected at the state level. You don't have anybody in the House of Representatives. You don't have anybody in the Senate. And beyond that, and this is the most important point, you know how many states they have ballot access in? Three. Three. So, I guess my main issue with something like this is, I don't trust the organization, and also, I have a... a an innate revulsion to this idea, we're going to run, but we're not really trying to win. What? In any other realm, we look at that with scorn and derision, right? I mean, look at, if you look at, uh, you know, a team in a professional sports league, and they're sort of tanking the season. Nobody wants to watch that team. Nobody cares about that team. Take, for example, like the Miami Heat, who are a phenomenal organization. They're super disciplined. They don't even have the best talent around them right now. Nobody thought they'd go as far as that. They were the eighth seed in the playoffs. Now they're in the finals against the number one seeded Denver Nuggets. You know why people respect the hell out of Miami, even though they're down 3-1 and probably going to lose the championship, right? It's because even though they didn't have all the pieces, they were like, hey man, we're playing for keeps. We are fighting to win. Whereas when you look at this venture, and honestly, oftentimes, other third-party ventures, most third-party ventures, they're not running to win. So then, why are you running? Now, in the case of Cornell West, I have no doubt he is doing this because he's a good man, and he wants to have a good outcome on the body politic, and he wants to awaken more people to get involved in politics. But you got to keep it real, bro. The organization he's a part of, do they have that same idea in mind? I don't know about that. I don't know about that. There's also some questionable uh, beliefs that have been espoused by this movement for a People's Party. They're certainly committed to an anti-vaccine position. They've been pretty open about that fact. So there's some question marks is all I'm saying. Everybody acknowledges there are question marks. That's why there was major backlash when Cornell West announced he was running. Now, having said all that, my main takeaway is I think Cornell West means well. And I just don't think he looked enough into the People's Party when he was approached by them. And he felt like, yeah, let's do this. Let's have a positive impact. Let's go for it. And my guess is he was surprised at the backlash, and then all the things that people brought up. They didn't even file the FEC paperwork to verify that he's running for president. You can announce the campaign, and you're not even literally technically running for president? So then everybody's raising this money. Where's this money going? And these are the questions that people have. Because the organization is not trustworthy. So where's that money going? Where's it going? Now, Cornell West is going to be asked by uh, Democracy Now!, the question that I just posed to you guys, which is like, hey, this is sketchy, this organization, why did you choose them, et cetera. And let's listen to his reaction. Very critical questions. I also want to read from a New Republic article about your candidacy and about the People's Party. The article states, quote, while the party began in 2017 with noble roots to form a new political party independent from corporate money and influence, it's been mired in troubling allegations, as well as broader organizational dysfunction, numerous sources of corroborated sexual harassment allegations against party founder Nick Brana. Last year, former party member Paula Jean Swearingen said she'd witnessed Brana try to force himself onto former party executive director Zana Day, who confirmed the allegations herself, numerous party board members were apparently forced out for encouraging investigations into the allegations and questioning whether Brana was still fit to lead the party, unquote. Brana has also praised the prominent anti-vaxxer Robert Kennedy Jr., who's also running for president, but as a Democrat. He described Kennedy as a, quote, courageous leader whose environmental and vaccine advocacy has illuminated issues that few dare to confront. Um, so he's the founder of the party that you're running with, the P People's Party. Talk about why you chose the People's Party and if you would like to respond to those allegations. Um, and also the bigger point of why you didn't choose, for example, if you wanted to be outside the race, the Green Party, which has more ballot access. But that's a lot there, Cornell. Yeah, no, indeed. And I appreciate that question, too, my dear sister. I mean, I mean, I have a great love for my Green Party brothers and sisters. I've 
worked twice with them, and so I have nothing uh, against their third-party operation. It would be nice if we had even a coming together, but that's something that is, is for a different show. But in terms of the history of the People's Party, you know, I was there at the founding. There's no doubt about that. And uh, I've been a, a kind of honorary member of the board, even though I haven't participated, so I haven't followed all of the insides and outsides uh, of what has happened. It strikes me that there's been some very bad and ugly moments. There's no doubt about that. But I don't want to adjudicate as to who actually is guilty or who's actually innocent, because I just don't know. But there has to be accountability, and especially when it comes to sexual harassment in terms of sisters of any color, that, that those are very, very important uh, uh, issues to wrestle with and very serious charges in that regard. But as I said before, that for me, I, I wanted to be able to bring a serious critique to bear on the corporate duopoly. And uh, uh, the People's Party, in its inception and in its vision, is a populist one. So you got a number of different voices, it's heterogeneous. It's got a, it is very loose. A lot of people say, well, is it an organization at all? I mean, it does anything hold it together and so forth and so on? Well, that, that, we shall see. Those are very important questions. I don't want to act as if uh, 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 they aren't serious challenges. I think this verifies my theory, man. I think this verifies my theory. I don't think he had any idea about all the question marks around the organization. Um, now, you can turn around and say, well, Dr. West, do your goddamn research. Do a Google search, right, before you agree to run for president under this banner. You can make that argument. That's a fair argument. But ultimately, do I hold that against Cornell West? I can't do it. I just I can't hold it against him. Why? He's a good man. We know he's a good man. He spent his life advocating for the things that I care deeply about and many of you care deeply about. I, I would probably agree with 90 to 95 percent of his platform. I'm sure there's going to be some areas of disagreement, uh, and we can get into that and flesh that out when the time comes and when these issues are brought up. But he's a good man. He means well. And I just think he didn't do enough background research when he agreed to go down this road. Now, I will say there is a little bit of a light at the end of the tunnel at the end of this conversation. Why? Because uh, there's apparently conversations going on right now vis-a-vis -vis the Green Party. So he might find a way to basically unify various left wing third party movements and then end up running under the banner of all of those different third party movements, which would certainly make it a, a more viable attempt. I use the word viable very, very loosely because it depends on what your goals are, right? If your goal is getting to 5% to get for getting matching funds, et cetera, then yes, it'll become more viable in the sense that now you have a, a snowball's chance in hell of maybe eking out that 5%, right? But like I said, I don't think he knew. I think he was probably mortified when he saw the backlash and he saw the specifics about what had gone down with the People's Party. I mean, you exist for six years and you get a single person elected? Six years! Not a single person elected? You have ballot access in three states? Three. Don't pretend like it's serious when that's the reality. These are just basic structural things that you need to get in order. You got to get all your ducks in a row if you want to play with the big boys. And they didn't do the bare minimum. So let's just call a spade a spade on that front. But that's not his problem. That's not his fault. That's not Cornell West's fault. But now he understands, oh, there's problems here. And my guess is, hopefully that meeting with the Green Party comes out with something fruitful. And that if he does continue to run, he runs with the Green Party. Now, the obvious asterisk here is what? Well, if you run under the Green Party banner, which would be better, well, there's going to be an election for that position. I mean, he was just appointed by the people. A, a party that proclaims we're all about democracy and they even have an election to choose their candidate. So he's going to have to run. But you know what? In a world that makes sense, uh, he would win, right? I mean, he's a big name. He's a public intellectual. He's a heavyweight. He's already known. And so a guy like Cornell West uh, could win a Green Party nomination. And in that case, it would also become more viable from a democracy perspective. But look, I come back to the original point, which is the most important point, which really annoys me to no end at this late date that some people don't realize this. If you're going to run a third party candidate, and if you want to have even the tiniest speck of a chance 
first things first, you need to get rid of first past the post voting and you need to embrace ranked choice voting. If we woke up tomorrow and first past the post po voting was gone in this country and we have ranked choice voting everywhere, well, then you know what? All these various third parties, libertarians, greens, you name it, as long as they have ballot access, overnight they become more viable. Just like that. Just like that. Why? Because then the perception of many people, oh, this is a spoiler effect. I can't give my vote to this person I agree with more because then the Republican is going to win the White House. This is the way people think, right? Whether it's true or not is irrelevant. The perception is real as a heart attack. So the only way you're going to have a true impact as a third party in a positive way is get rid of first past the post voting. Don't put the cart before the horse. Put the horse before the cart. Get rid of first past the post voting. Get ranked choice voting. And get ballot access. If those three conditions are met, I become the biggest simp in the world for third party movements that align with my values. Until that point, you got to call a spade a spade and realize there's not much hope here, even of getting to 5%. If you're, not, if you're only on the ballot in three states, how are you going to get to 5%? You're not going to do it. It's not going to happen. So ultimately, as I've stated for you guys before, I'm supporting Marianne Williamson in the Democratic primary. Uh, and I know she's going to give it her all. And we'll see how far we can take it. And look, if it comes down to a general election and you have Trump versus Biden versus Cornell West running on the Green Party ticket, will I vote for Cornell West? Yeah, I'll, I'll vote for Cornell West. I vote in New York. My, it's not a swing state. My vote effectively doesn't really matter all that much, right? I'll try to get them to 5% so they can get matching funds, maybe spark something. But understand something. That's not me ushering in the revolution. I'm not a hero for casting a third-party ballot. And in the end result, it might not even have all that positive a result. Unless and until you get rid of first-past-the-post voting, embrace ranked choice voting, and get ballot access, it's not all that serious. So even if you do cast that vote, which, again, I probably will as a New York resident. You got to call a spade a spade. If you think this is some sort of clear path to victory, you got another thing coming. <laughs> it ain't. Because if anything, the exact opposite happened of what the third party people said would happen. What do they say? Oh, if we, if we vote for Jill Stein, which, by the way, I did. I did. If we vote for Jill Stein, what will happen is we can get her a decent chunk, maybe 5%. Thereabouts, we didn't. Nobody hit that. She didn't hit that. But then you get taken seriously by the Democrats. They'll take you seriously because now you're a block that needs to be contended with in order to win. And so then they absorb you into the party and they take some of your ideas. The exact opposite of that happened. She only got what three percent thereabouts. And what do they do? They blamed you more for their loss, and they marginalized you more, and they ran further away from your ideas, and they ran further and further to the right. That's what happened. That's what happened. No, the way that you actually have an impact and move things in the right direction is to put tremendous pressure on them from within the party. This is what Bernie did. Everybody talks about how Bernie failed, Bernie failed, Bernie failed. Yeah, he didn't win, that's for sure. But he got over 43% of the vote. And Bernie and his people wrote a lot of the, not just the Democratic Party platform, a lot of the Democratic Party legislation, which never would have happened if he didn't scare the shit out of them. There was that clip from the Hillary documentary. I don't know how many of you saw this. Where there was a moment after Bernie won, what was it? I think it was the state of Michigan. We were like, holy shit, Bernie Sanders is going to be president of the United States. Or Bernie Sanders is going to win the Democratic nomination. What the fuck are we supposed to do? So you actually scare power. You actually force them to reckon with you. And then there's a deeper conversation about how Bernie and other people who are left Democrats sort of failed because they don't know how to play politics. They don't know how power works. They don't know how to negotiate. That's certainly true. But they were way closer than anybody in any third party movement. If you want to say taking over the Democratic Party has failed, fair enough. But you know what's failed even worse? By a lot. All these various third party movements, which haven't even gotten to five fucking percent. So if the failures count from within the Democratic Party, you bet your ass all these failed third party movements count from outside. Did you know Donald Trump? I don't know if he ran or almost ran, but he was all about the Reform Party back in like the late 90s and the early 2000s. Oh, yeah, I'm going to run for president. I'm going to win that way. How did Donald Trump actually end up winning? Running in one of the two major parties. Why? Because we don't have ranked choice voting. 
we still have first past post voting and ballot access matters. That's how he actually won. So the roadmap is there. It's just a matter of execution. I mean, honestly, the ideal way for Cornell West to run would have been in the Democratic primary. And honestly, I'm of the belief now, having grown and seen these things unfold a number of times, learning through experience, we would have been in a best case scenario if there was only one left candidate representing the left. So let's say Marion didn't run. If Cornell was running in the Democratic primary, then he could give Biden run for his money. Um, or if there were no other candidates running and it was just Marianne and Biden, again, that's how you give the best chance for the left to succeed. But look, we are where we are. I hope Cornell West can get on the Green Party ballot because it's certainly more serious than the movement for a people's party. 48 is a much higher number than three. So I hope that uh, he can get on the Green Party ballot. And I hope that it makes some sort of a splash. If Marianne doesn't win the primary, then I hope it can make some sort of a splash. But everybody's got to keep perspective on this man and there's a lot of delusional thinking out there and a lot of copium that a lot of people are huffing as a result of this so i don't blame cornell west for this i don't think he really knew all the problems with the people's party and it's good to see at least he's trying to address it by saying i'll I'll try to marry with a more legitimate organization that at least has a track record of getting the basic infrastructure right because where he is right now they're not even close to checking the most basic boxes Hey y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop and watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.